Hello and welcome back to Cloud Force Vibes. I figured we'd just take a quick look around. I gotta get this monster Nepenthes out of the way as per tradition. But um, I'll go ahead and do that real quick and come back and we'll take a look and see what's new. Okay, so we're back. Uh, I got the Nepenthes out of the way. And I figured we'd just take a quick look around again. The first plant I wanted to film is this Dendrochrylum gracile, gracile. And it's just starting to open up. It's two of its four flower spikes. It's really hard to shoot because they're really tiny. I'm hoping I can get them in focus for you. Uh, it's not looking like it's going to happen. Delicate little green flowers and they have a brownish purplish stripe in the lip. Um, I'll get better pictures of that and post it. See what I'm talking about, but that's my dendrochrylum, first dendrochrylum I've ever gotten to, uh, well, first dendrochrylum I've ever owned actually, so first dendrochrylum blooms. I've got a miniature over here. This is Dendrobium microbulbin, and it's opened up two flowers. Okay, and I'll have to get some pictures of this. got a whole lot going on. I've got several plants in spike. My uh, Encyclia, this is Bractessens, has started to uh, sheath right here. So that means it's most likely going to spike. If you see that, that's the beginnings of a flower spike on most Encyclias. And I've got another one here. This is an Encyclia species. This is Encyclia tampensis. I don't know if you can see that or not, but right there, and below it, down here, whoop, where is it? I have to get this one out. Down there is two flower spikes. So that's a Florida native species. I'm really excited about that plant. Um, I got that from Andy's Orchids and mounted it, and it's been doing really well so far. Um. I still have a whole lot else going on. Oh, I gotta get up. Lots and lots of stuff in growth. I've got this uh, Phalaenopsis parishii. This is a Phalaenopsis species right here. And it's also put out two spikes. So we're just waiting for those to mature and do their thing. Uh, it seems to be a pretty happy plant. I moved it up here. I'm giving it a little bit more light. And it seems to have really responded well to it. So, cutting over. Let's just start up here in the top. I've got a uh, Phalaenopsis. This is my first orchid ever. I do not know the name of it, but it's a mini fowl. White flowers, pink, I'm sorry, purple veining. And it should be opening up any day now. And back here, I used to have a fowl balina sat right here in a pot. And the other day, I got a wild hair and I just decided to mount it. And it is growing. It's got a new leaf coming, and it's got a spike that started in the fall, but aborted, or well, just stopped, stopped growing over the winter. Um, I, I suspect my temperatures were just a little bit too cool for it. I let it get down to about 57 or 58 degrees at night in here for certain orchids, and um, some of the fowls, they suffer a little bit. So I'm coming over here. This actually was part of that plant. There was two seedlings stuck in a pot. And that's also a Phalaenopsis balina. So they both got mounted. Um, I did have this in spike. This is Oncidium pumulum. And I showed that in my last update. And you'll notice it no longer has the spikes on it. So brokenheartedly, I cut both spikes off because it started to really get a lot of senescence. And the yellowing of the leaves and some of the roots started to die back, and I really need to take a second stab at getting this plant happy again because it's obviously not. So it dropped two of the leaves. It's only got one leaf left on this section of the plant, so I'm hoping it pulls through. But I sacrificed the flower spikes to try to get some strength back in this guy and figure, you know, we'll just have to wait to see the blooms. I'd rather save the plant. 
Um, let's see, I've got my something I don't show often. This is my sphagnum moss propagation area, I guess you want to call it. It's just two Rubbermaid containers, um, little, you know, food containers that I grow them hydroponically in. I just have the water level kept at all times about half an inch to an inch. And I just plopped it down in there, and I mean, it is growing strong. If you look down in there, it's got more heads coming up. But it's soft, it's supple, it is nice, and I'm going to have to divide it soon. I've had this about, oh, a month and a half, two months now, and it has just doubled in size. So, I got some more containers. I'm going to split this up here, and I will show you guys how I do that. So, that's my live moss propagation station. <laughs> I've got a uh, Renanthera here, I put it in this pot, this uh, basket, I mean, it's the only one I have and I really like it, so I'm going to have to look into getting some more of these plants and uh, baskets, but it's got a new leaf coming on, and if you look on the bottom side, it's got a really nice new root going on down there, growing down and back up into the basket already, so in a month's time it's already pushed out that root. Um, I've got... A couple Brassavola species here. This is Brassavola regina, and it's got a new growth and some new roots coming on. I've struggled with this plant, but I think the back end of it was sick. I think it had some sort of a bacterial or fungal infection, and I finally chopped these front three pseudobulbs off, and it started to grow a new growth. So I think that's a good sign. It seems like a much happier plant now. We're just going to have to keep an eye on that and see how it goes. And then down here, this is a uh, Brassavola subula, subulifolia. Sorry. Yeah, subulifolia. This is a Jamaican species. It is just coming back into new growth. It's got some new growths pushing out down here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, right there and right there. So it is uh, doing well. And then all my telumnias. I've got a surprise for you guys. I've got a new Tolumnia coming here, hopefully in about a week or so. But I've got um, a couple hybrids, this one and this one. You've seen the blooms of those, I believe, on Roger's Facebook group um, over the winter and fall. And I've got several species. This is my Tetrapetala. This is a Velutina. This is an... Oh, gosh, I always forget the name. Europhyllum. Uh, Roger has that. That's a beautiful yellow one. And this is a Sylvestre. So I've got a new species to add to my little Tolumnia species collection going on. I'm really happy about that. So I will be unveiling that next week whenever it gets here. This week whenever it gets here. Um, I've got several species of Sophronides. I've got a Cernua up here in the corner. It's doing well. Um, it's pushing out new growths all over the place. And it seems to be a pretty happy plant. There's a nice new growth coming right there in the center. So I'm hoping in the next year or two I can hopefully see blooms on that. But I got it. It was a seedling. So, you know, sometimes it takes quite a bit of time. Um, these are two recent acquisitions. This one and this one. And this is Sophronides manticure. And I just got it. It had a, bulb, um, it had a bloom spike with one bud on it. And I cut it off. I did when I got it because the bud looked like it had been beat up and I just wanted this plant to push on strong. It's a stick mounted plant. Stick mounts don't do awesome in my environment. But they look great. Um, but it will undoubtedly come off this stick very soon and go onto a piece of cork. And this Sophronides here is Pygmaea. And yes, it is Pygmy. It is very, very small. So that one is also a new addition. I got them both from Andy's, and I am just stoked to have both of them. I've been after Sulfonides for a while. Um, I've got a couple other Cattleya types up here. I'm going to do a Cattleya video soon. Um, I'm not great with them, but I have a, amassed a pretty decent collection at this point in time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait and do them all at that time. Um, I've got other plants here doing really good. I've got several different Angracum or Angracoid species and types, and I'll go through those here also in a video, but um, I have Elephantium, I've got Ionella polystichus, I've got a um, Angracum 
Ditteri down here. I've got a Arengas Falcata. Oh, wait, that's not right. Punctata, Arengas Punctata down here. A Arengas Mysticidii. Um, this is a Mysticidium Braybone or Brayboni. And this is a Mysticidium. I have no idea. Venosum up here. And I've kind of gone through a little kick lately with my South African and Madagascar species, especially the Angracoids. So I will definitely do a video here on them with some care coming up soon because they are just such rewarding, such fun plants to grow. Um, this monster, um, I've featured this a couple times on Roger's Facebook group. This is a Brassia Jippy Japensis. And I had this in a pot, a six inch pot, and it overtook it in a year. It is an absolute beast of a plant. So I got this giant piece of cork in a shipment and I decided to make use of it with this guy and I'm so happy it did. I did because it pushed up three new growths immediately. And they're getting pretty big. And I'm really hoping I can see blooms on this thing in the next year or so. I gotta step back to even try to get it in the shot. I mean, it is a monster. It's probably two feet across. So digging in through here, I've got my Maxillaria tenuifolia, which continues to just impress with growth. I mean, this plant is massive and I just cannot get it to bloom. I don't think it gets enough light. Same thing with some of the Oncidiums you see down here. You'll notice I did move my Ionopsis up to a higher area. I want to get more artificial light and less sunlight just to be safe and acclimated better. Um, I've got another Maxillaria species down in there. That's a Shep Shepherdii or Shepherdii tucked in with uh, Bulbophyllums and some, some other fun things. Um, everything seems to be doing well though. Um, this right here, this is my, one of my pride and joys. This is my Dendrobium rhodostictum and it is just doing fantastic. It had a really awesome blooming. That bloom stayed on this fl um, plant for like five months, almost six months. I, I cannot complain. It's got a real strong new growth coming up here. It's got another strong one in the back that came up. It's got another strong one coming up here. So three directions of growth and more coming. Oops, let me zoom in on that. More coming down at the base. Um, tons of roots coming, tons of roots that grew over the winter. Uh, this plant never really slowed down. So I took it down to about 57 or 58 degrees in here and then I was worried about it. I was going to be ready to bump it up if I had to, but it did absolutely fine. Um, it really never missed a beat. So uh, getting around. This is my ultimately shady shelf and it's adjacent to the window so it gets some pretty bright shade but it's also got some mounts over there that block any sunlight from getting to it and below gets even less so these are my real shady growers this is where i keep the puffinia this is where my dracula baroii lives i've got a um, couple other plants down here this is a maxillaria parkeri um, i have a dikea histrocina down here and it came pretty rough shape, but it's put up six new growths. Sorry, seven new growths. So I'm really excited to see where that goes. Uh, this is a new Mormolica. Uh, this is Schweinfurthiana, and it is acclimating. It's finally doing something. So it's growing some new roots. That's exciting. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, that's my shady shelf. And then the opposite of that, behind this Dendrobium rhodostictum, um, this is my other shady shelf, but a couple pleurothalids, a couple bulbophyllums, the new macropodanthus, and um, I do have a few special ones. This is um, a Sischweinfia horichii, and I got this a few months ago. It kind of is about, oh, let me get out that light. It's kind of like Oncidium twinkle sized, but it grows more like. A maxillaria in a way um, it's got a really weird flower if I think about it I'll put up a pop-up so you guys can see it but it's
growing on. It's got new roots coming. It really appreciated its repot. It came to me in pure sphagnum moss, and that just does not do well in my environment. The only thing that has that right now is this, and it just started poking new roots out, so it is going to come out of that pot and get repotted very, very soon. I will show you guys what I do with that. So that's really it. I just wanted to run through some quick things here and show you guys around just a little bit more, a little bit more in depth. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've got a lot of watering to do, so I gotta get started on that before the day's over. And I just flushed everything the other day, so it's time to get back into the feeding side of things. So thank you guys for joining. I'll throw some pop-ups up of these new blooms. And uh, we'll go ahead and just end on this because this is really graceful. You kinda see. I'm really happy I mounted this thing. Um, I, I haven't seen a lot of dendro columns mounted. You see most people grow them in pots, but the way that the blooms just cascade down, it's really, really attractive. So, I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for joining. I hope you guys are staying safe. And I will see you guys next time.